is it the greatest discovery of our time? I sp it must be up there, I suppose, if it turns out to be really what they think they've found. If it's true, it's huge, and, uh, but there's just one piece of evidence for it at the moment. The measurement that they've made is of the polarisation of the cosmic microwave background. So cosmic microwave background is this leftover radiation from the Big Bang, and polarisation is this fact that you know, photons can sort of have an orientation associated with them to do with the direction in which their electric fields are oscillating, and it could be up and down or left and right or whatever. And this is very characteristic signature that they've detected in the cosmic microwave background where there's a pattern of polarization on the sky. So you measure the polarization of the light that's coming from one bit of sky and another bit of sky and another bit of sky and so on. And you end up with this very characteristic pattern of sort of a spiral of polarization. Potentially, we're probing the very, very, very early universe, about 10 to the minus 35 seconds. It's called a B mode because it looks a little bit like a magnetic field sort of type structure as opposed to an E mode which are the ones that kind of stick radially outwards and they look a bit like an electric field but the the B mode polarization this very characteristic pattern is a signature of inflation which is this process in the very early universe whereby we went from a very small universe up to a very large universe very quickly. I've not come across it quite like this there was the build-up for the Higgs and that was that had a lot of press associated with it but that had a gradual development of tentative evidence of, of, of a detection, and then a few months later, more evidence. This is bang, <laughs> we found it. So the, the origins of this is one of the byproducts of inflation is you end up imprinting uh, gravitational waves into the early universe, so these oscillations of, of space itself. Um, and so it's the imprint of those gravitational waves that you see in the polarization signature. This particular experiment, BICEP, uh, which is down in the, in the South Pole, has probably had the highest sensitivity of all the experiments looking for this thing. And uh, so maybe it's not surprising that they're the first ones to find any evidence of what we interpret as gravitational waves. I mean, that's exciting in itself. It's, you know, it's one of, the, one of the predictions of inflation is that these primordial gravitational waves should be there, and this is the signature of them. What are gravitational waves? These are new, are they? No, they've been around ever since Einstein wrote down his... Well, they've been around <laughs> since the beginning of the universe, but we've known about them ever since Einstein wrote down his uh, field equations that describe how space, time and matter interact with one another. There are various people in the, in the gravitational wave community who are quite annoyed about this news story because it's been you know, headlined as this is the first detection of gravitational waves. And of course there was the binary pulsar, which is a pair of pulsars in orbit around one another, which, because there are a couple of objects in orbit around one another, are giving out gravitational waves, and so they're losing energy, so they're spiraling in together, and that spiraling in together has already been detected and has already won the Nobel Prize. And so in that sense, gravitational waves have already been detected. Um, but these are the primordial gravitational waves, and in some sense this is a slightly more direct detection of them. You're still not seeing the gravitational waves themselves, but you're seeing kind of a, a fairly direct signature of the gravitational waves. And they're basically fluctuations in the space-time and waves propagating because of fluctuations in the space-time due to the influence of, of matter. But now there has been a detection. It's not a direct detection of gravitational waves, but it's almost as good as it. It's like saying, I think the analogue is saying, we we're all seem to be happy that we found the Higgs. Well, no one saw the Higgs. <laughs> the Higgs had decayed in 10 to the minus 20 seconds or something. We saw the products of its decay, which we thought we understood. And this is an example of that, that uh, the, in certain theories of the, of the early universe, in particular inflationary theories, we expect there to be these ripples in the background space-time producing these gravitational waves, which have then propagated since 10 to the minus 35 seconds, and they influence the space-time as they're going through, and they can distort it and stretch it, compress it. And so photons of light that go through this, they get what's known as polarised by, by the presence, in a very particular way, by the presence of the, uh, this, these gravitational waves. And by looking for the particular polarisation patterns, then you infer that you have evidence of these gravitational waves. And, and it's that that this wonderful, quite amazing experiment has, has seems to have found evidence for. Your job is studying galaxies, galaxy yep. formation and evolution. Is there anything about this discovery by BICEP, if it, if it stands, that will trickle through to your work? Is this useful to you? Well, in some sense, so if inflation happened, then actually the sort of the seeds, everything got blown up enormously in scale, which means that things on the, the quantum scale, the microscopic scale, got blown up to macroscopic scales. So actually, the, the, if you like, the primordial seeds from which all the structure in the universe formed, 
the galaxies, the large scale structure, the clusters and all that, were actually caused by this inflationary process of starting from microscopic quantum mechanical things and blowing them up to the scales that we can see at. So in that sense, there's sort of a, a, a sort of first cause, if you're looking for, as to where galaxies first came from. It's in the South Pole. It's not a huge experiment, it's, but it's basically um, you know, a, a big telescope, but it's sensitive to polarised light. It targets small patches of the sky. It doesn't do a full all-sky survey like, say, the Planck satellite has done. It targets small patches of the sky, and it just looks at the microwave radiation coming to it from those regions of the sky, and it looks for patterns in the polarisation. Perhaps in the more immediate term, there's also this issue that, w that probably the, rem the, rem the remaining biggest degree of scepticism about this detection is whether they're really seeing a primordial B-mode effect or whether it's something that was imprinted more recently. Then they do the analysis of this, they have to extract out all the foregrounds, all the spurious things that can also create polarised light and wait to see if they have a residual signal that they can't account for by anything else. And in particular, one of the things that people who study the cosmic microwave background worry about a great deal are foregrounds, things that have nothing to do with the cosmic microwave background. And in fact, our, our own galaxy, the Milky Way, is a major source of foregrounds, and there's plenty of polarised photons being produced in the Milky Way because there are magnetic fields in the Milky Way and lots of things that produce polarisation. So one of the things these guys have to do very carefully is take out all those foregrounds. And so it could be that actually galaxies are the things that are messing up this signal rather than the thing that are, that, that, that are you know, at some f fundamental way being produced by it. On a scale on the sky, which is about one degree in the sky, so if you imagine looking at the sky and picking out one degree patches, then these are the sizes of the, of the signals, the, the, the regions of which these signals are found. And they, they, that matches very well predictions from theories of inflation, that they, the, these theories many of them suggest that you should be finding evidence of these what do we call primordial gravitational waves, primordial because they were formed in the very early universe, on a scale of about one degree or so. And so there's a, there's a, there's a hope that that's what we're actually seeing. I, th I think if, if it holds, if the result holds and the interpretation of the result in terms of we're seeing evidence of these gravitational waves being produced in the first 10 to the minus 35 seconds. What you're seeing is, A, the furthest back anyone can possibly see, right? Just two orders of magnitude below the Planck scale. You're, you're then probing physics that we've got no other way of probing. We'll have no way of really probing this at accelerators. They can't reach this kind of energy. And we've got a way of kind of understanding, it. if it's confirmation of inflation, it means we've got a way of understanding the Big Bang. I'm not the right person to talk to to answer this question, but Maybe that's why my you're level, right. yeah, my level of understanding, you, you go through a, a phase of the expansion of the universe where the whole thing expands incredibly rapidly, exponentially rapidly. So you end up with this, starting from you know the very small regions, blow up to become extremely large regions of the universe, um, and this solves all sorts of problems about our understanding of the universe. For example, we do have this problem that if you look at the cosmic microwave background in that direction and the cosmic microwave background in that direction, they're almost identical to each other. They have exactly the same temperature, exactly the same structure. Those two bits of the universe have never been in causal contact with one another. They have never actually had a chance to talk to each other if you don't have inflation. And, and so how did that bit of the universe know to have exactly the same temperature as that bit of the universe if they've never actually been close enough together to kind of exchange that information? Whereas inflation is a way of, of actually things which are no longer in causal contact with one another in the very early universe before they inflated really were in contact with one another. And so this, causes, this solves this problem of, as to how the universe can be as uniform as it is when you're looking at things which shouldn't actually have ever had an opportunity to talk to each other. Have they just found this polarised light and said, we reckon this has passed through these primordial gravitational waves hooray, we found gravitational waves? Or have they used the, the mapping of this light to tell us something about those waves? It's, t it's they've both. <laughs> they've done both things because the, the first thing that they've done is by looking at these patterns of, of the polarization, that, how the, 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 the lines of polarization go around these hot and cold spots they're able to determine that what they're seeing is actually known as B-mode polarisation. It's a, just a technical term. But the key thing is that the B-modes can be 
um, in the, from inflation, B modes are only produced by gravitational waves. It was well set up, as a, you know, they, they trailed it cleverly because actually they, you know, there was a bit of mystery going around, so there was a bit of interest as to what is it they're going to announce. And it is a big deal, right? It's a hugely big deal to understand this fundamental piece of physics and whether it's really... But they, they did it extremely well, which I suspect is why it got picked up by the media as, as strongly as it did, because they actually, you know, they, they set it up in the right way and they had all the right stuff in place so that when the story came out, the media was all set to go with it. Gravitational waves just propagate. That's, that's the most beautiful thing in, sense, in some sense about gravitational waves. They, they, don't, they don't get cancelled out by anything. And, you know, they can propagate through the universe. They, they interact with matter and they, through Einstein's equations and they just propagate. They don't get absorbed and you, you lose them. You can do the best science in the world and if you then don't present it in a way that the world can understand, then you, you know, it's just going to stay in the dusty filing cabinets. The, the problem with light, you know, what, how far back in the universe can we see? Well, we can see to the origin of that cosmic background radiation. We can see back to when the universe was about 380,000 years old. And, but beyond there, we can't see. The universe becomes opaque. And because all the light keeps scattering across the, the ionized plasma that lived before that period, gravitational waves don't care about the ionized plasma. Gravitational waves don't care about the density of the material. They just propagate through. And so that's the fantastic thing. What we've got here, if it works out, and now that the technology is reaching the levels where you can regularly see these, um, this signal, is we have a new telescope, if you like, that's probing through the cosmic microwave background, past that era, and back to the earliest moments. And the, the other really neat thing about the gravitational waves is that if it's from inflation, say, is that what you're really finding evidence for is the energy scale of the early universe. When did inflation occur? And it seems to have occurred, at, as I said, about a hun you know, hundredth of a Planck scale. This is a typical scale that you associate with what is called unification, where you unify all the forces of nature. You know, one of the goals of theoretical physics is to unify gravity, um, um, the weak interactions, the electromagnetic interactions, and the strong force. And it's believed that the area where they will be most likely unified are, are called grand unified scales, and the favourite candidates are up at about 10 to the 16, it's called 10 to the 16 giga electron volts, 10 to the 16 billion electron volts. This is now, and now what we're saying, I think, is any decent unification theory had better take on board inflation as well. <laughs> it better figure out how to incorporate inflation into your particle physics so that we can properly understand unification of forces, one of the major goals of theoretical physics. You have to be very careful about it. You can't go just go throwing stories out before you really have analysed the data to death and really understood exactly what's going on. But that's what these guys did, right? They put a huge amount of work in. They've had the data for years now. They've been worrying about all these things that we've just been talking about, about the foreground and whether they really are detecting what they thought they were and whether they're instrumental effects and so on. So they've done all their work. And at that point, you have to then put it out to the world. And that's what they did. The other interesting thing is that not only did they have this big press conference, but they actually released all their data as well. So there's a whole bunch of scientists all around the world now who are all busily pouring over their data just to make sure that there aren't any sort of showstoppers that they've missed. What is the point? I mean, it's very fundamental physics, right? It's really understanding how the universe came into being in the first place. And it's going to have implications for, you know, these people who think that there, there might be a multiverse, there might be multiple universes out there, it also connects in with the ideas of inflation and so on. So in some sense, it's really very, in, at a very fundamental level, telling us where we came from, it's the origins of the universe. Is understanding the origin of the universe going to change the price of milk? No, probably not. But it's just, you know, it's, it's in that sense, it's sort of the connections between science and philosophy. It's about understanding the real origins of the universe. It's probably, you know, in some sense, it's the biggest question you could ever hope to answer. And, and as with a lot of big questions, it doesn't have direct implications for everyday life, but it just sort of changes your outlook on the world a bit. A few nanoseconds after the actual initial singularity. The Big Bang has certain assumptions in it. I'm going to come to inflation, why you need inflation and what it is. The Big Bang has certain assumptions in it. It's based on what is called the cosmological principle, which is something Einstein introduced. 